Welcome Life Top 5 Real Life Viruses and Hollywood Viruses are different. Real Life Viruses have unpleasant symptoms. Hollywood Viruses have mutant zombie vampires with anger issues. Real Life Viruses can be controlled with hand washing and staying indoors. Hollywood Viruses are controlled by running around with guns, controlled explosions, and occasionally nuclear weapons. Real Life Viruses are a bit boring. Hollywood Viruses can be awesome. So, after you've washed your hands, why not sit down, relax and see how the experts do it. Top 5 Movies About Plague, Pestilence, and Deadly Disease Number 5 Contagion This one is a little bit scary. Directed by Steven Soderbergh, Contagion is a movie about how viruses spread. It is about how difficult they are to contain, and how devastating the consequences can be when they're not contained. The film has been praised by scientists for its accurate portrayal of the difficulties of dealing with pandemics. Its all-star cast may help distract you from the impending breakdown of society. The film has everything, from politicians trying to downplay the seriousness of the epidemic, to charlatans trying to make a quick buck selling homeopathic cures, and heroic scientists who work round the clock to try to develop a vaccine. Soderbergh said that he was trying to make an ultra-realistic film about pandemics, and their effect on social order. Job done. Number 4 28 Days Later When Killian Murphy awakes from a coma after four weeks, the world is a different place. He walks the streets of a deserted London, wondering what on earth happened has happened, and looking for signs of life. It turns out that an animal rights group has accidentally released a chimpanzee with a highly contagious virus which causes extreme rage and loss of control. During the 28 days he has been asleep, society has collapsed and the world has all but ended. Point 28 Days Later is not a film about viruses, as such, but about what happens to society when the normal rules of life are suspended. It's not pretty. Number 3 Train to Busan If you want a virus outbreak film that doesn't take itself too seriously, you could go for Train to Busan. A South Korean action-slash-horror film, it broke records in Korea for audience size. Imagine you are on a busy train. A woman boards at the last minute, looking pretty ill. The train has barely pulled out of the station before the woman mutates into a zombie figure, who then attacks the guard, who then also mutates. Not only that, but, Whilst trying to quarantine the infected passengers in one railway car, your train passes burning buildings, and other mutant zombies, so there's no point trying to get off. What do you do next? Train to Busan has been described as the best zombie film ever, and did wonders for the popularity of South Korean cinema, although probably not quite so much for its train companies. Number 2 12 Monkeys What do you do if a deadly virus has wiped out most of humanity? Obviously, you build a time machine and send Bruce Willis back from a dystopian future to sort it out. 12 Monkeys is directed by Terry Gilliam, so you know it's also going to be a little bit strange. Brad Pitt is certainly strange as are the other inmates of the lunatic asylum to which Bruce is very quickly confined. Pitt's performance won him a well-deserved Oscar nomination for his performance as an anarchist eco-terrorist with daddy issues and a side serving of psychosis. In truth the movie isn't really about a virus. It's Bruce Willis saving the world. Again. And that is always fun to watch. But it is Terry Gilliam's direction, 
with his trademark black humor and twisted endings and Brad Pitt's crazy man performance that takes this film from fun to fantastic. Number 1 Death in Venice Death in Venice stands apart from the others on this list as being not just entertainment, but art. Scene after scene we are met with some of the most beautifully filmed images of one of the world's most beautiful places, Venice. The film follows Gustav von Aschenbach who is taking time to recuperate from a nervous breakdown in Venice, which ironically is beginning to feel the effects of a cholera epidemic. In between lusting after an adolescent Polish boy staying at the same hotel and dealing with a midlife crisis, Aschenbach has flashbacks to the death of his daughter and his career as a composer. The unraveling of the of the protagonist's life through the film leads us to one of the most poignant and macabre endings ever. Director Lucchino Visconti, featured on top 10 films about economic disaster you really need to watch for the damned, proved himself a true visionary in the production of this film.